Hello, hello, hello. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You are listening to Contend for the Faith broadcast. This is your host, Evangelist Sabrina White. As usual, I am excited to be with you. We are going to be talking today about when disaster strikes. Again, when disasters strike. And our uh, text, um, our scripture text will be found in Galatians the 6th chapter and the 10th verse, and it reads, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Having said that, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood on today. We thank you for your covering on today. We thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood. You made a way for us to be saved. You did that. We thank you how you brought us out of the filth and the muck and the mirror. We have not forgotten, hallelujah, how far we were from you, how we offended you, how we enjoyed our sin. We did not want to come in, but Lord, you gave us a mind. You called us and we begin to hear your voice. You called us, Lord, off the streets. You called us, Lord Jesus, out of all avenues of life, all walks of life, Lord Jesus. You called us, Lord, and we appreciate that. Nobody could have done it but you. And then you came and you washed us of our sins. The things that we did that we're so ashamed of that we did against you, we did against our family, we can never erase that. We can never, Lord Jesus, and do anything that could fix that, only you. So you saved us, and you filled us with your spirit, and we thank you for that, Jesus. How oh, That's better than gold, hallelujah. That's better than anything that you saved us and gave us a mind. You put your mind in us, and we thank you right now. Thank you for your redeeming power. Father, we ask that you would save over the land right now. So many are wanting to come home. So many backsliders are wanting to come back. So many souls, they don't know what to do. They're twilling their thumbs and walking back and forth. And they're twisting their hair. They don't know what to do. So much has been barring them at one time. But Lord Jesus, you are the answer. Help them to see that today through the broadcast. Lord, hell of us, do what you do. Jesus, these and everything that I'm asking, I'm asking in your name. Your seal and your approval. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. I tell you, Lord, it's good. Even in this time, even this dreaded dark time. But he is the light. He is the light that shines in darkness. He's the light of the world. Amen. He is your light. If you're trying to come out of darkness right now, Jesus is the light. He will show you. He will show you. Just listen to him. Listen to him. Cry out to him. Seek him. Call on him. This is the time. The prime opportunity that you can take advantage of salvation. I tell you, the Lord love you. And you're precious to him more than you can ever know or to believe. Okay, we're talking to him today. When disaster strikes, I know you have your Bible. I'm just going to take it by faith that you have your Bibles, you have your pen, your paper. There, here's my Bible right here. And uh, we read the scripture, and you're here in Galatians 6 and 10. We thank Emmanuel Outreach. We do give on the crisis and be the head of our lives. We thank Emmanuel Outreach Church Ministries. We do thank Mr. Bransfield and the KDIV 98.7 family there in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I appreciate you, sir. I appreciate the family that's there. I thank the Lord for the saints of God that are lifting me up in prayer, that is crying out for souls to come in through this broadcast. Not only through this broadcast, anyone that's holding up the bloodstained banner for Jesus, representing Jesus in this dark time, that's calling out souls to go down in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins, be 
filled with the Holy Ghost and live a great life, a sanctified Holy Ghost filled life, a holy life set apart from the world. Somebody is seeking the right way. Someone is seeking truth out of all of this false prophets and all this glamour and church glamour and shining sermons. Someone saying there's more to this than this. There's more to life than making money. There's more to life than making another deal. There's more to life than marriage. <laughs> There's more to life than this. Something more fulfilling than I, I thought this was going to fulfill me. I thought even revenge was going to fulfill me. But it's, it's I'm so empty. So I want to encourage you today to accept Jesus as your Savior. He is waiting. He loves you. His arms are open wide. Backslider, come on home. Come on home. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Just come on back. No excuses. No reason. No, just come on back. The Lord is going to accept you. Holly, trust me, he's going to accept you. He does not care. Just come on. Stop making excuses. Cinnamon, stop making excuses. Just come on. Come on, this is the time because Jesus loves you just that much. Okay, let's get to work. Our lesson today is, I just had to say that I feel that someone is trying to come home. I believe that someone wants to be saved and so much is attached to them. But if you can just say, Lord, help me break away. Just help me to breathe. But all of this stuff is smothering me. Help me now. Breathe, Lord. I believe, I know in my heart that the Lord will help you, not only help you to breathe, but breathe into you the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fill your belly with fire and you will bring in souls because you'll know what it took to bring you. You'll know what it took to keep you. You know what it took to preserve you. You know what it took. Hallelujah. You look back and you say, I can't go back. Hallelujah. I'm going forward. And I'm bringing people into heaven with me. I'm not just going by myself, but I'm bringing others with me. We're going to talk about, again, <laughs> I've been repeating myself lately, when disaster strike. In recent years and recently, natural disasters have struck different regions of our world. You all know about it's already the COVID and all these things are in the, in, in, in the news. Uh, in our international news, world news, it is in the news. So the question is, why did it happen? These are legitimate questions. The Lord is not intimidated by your question. I serve a great big God, <laughs> and his name is Jesus. <laughs> He's not intimidated when we ask questions. He can handle it, trust me. <laughs> why did it happen? Uh, did God cause it? Or if not, if he didn't cause it, then why did he allow it to happen? And what can I do? It has happened. Okay, what can I do? So these are, are, are good questions. I think they're very healthy questions. They're good questions. Your child come to you. She might or he might ask you, mom, dad, what's going on? Da, da, da. It's okay. Your spouse, you might strike up a conversation. Even we have said, you know, uh, Jesus spoke of these times. He really did. And Matthew and the gospel, he spoke of these times. Amen. And he, the only solution he was giving in that time, and we, we, we are, we're acting upon it now, is that be ready. <laughs> be ready. These things are going to come. Be ready. Your redemptive draw, uh, redemption draweth nigh. So why did it happen? Did God cause it in all? It's a common it's common to call uh, such natural, nat natural disasters acts of God. Perhaps because of God had used natural disasters in the past, like the flood, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 18 and 20, 19, 24 and 25, famines, drought, pestilence, plagues, war, earthquakes, these things were done against Israel, and we know about the twelve. Uh, we know about the plagues that happened in Egypt, and so these things was uh, all attributes by the hand of God. Um, some disasters are man-made, bridge collapsings, 
due to poor construction and wear and tear over time. Forest fire, fires sometimes happen due to an irresponsible person. So suffering often comes upon even during these disasters and during these times, often come upon the innocent. Job 8, 1, 8 and 12 and 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three. So we should not make the assumptions that Job friend made when he was going through such a tragical uh, period in his life. Uh, presuming that, you know, um, um, there's something that you've done wrong or in the, you know, implying or uh, trying to cast guilt upon a, a bad situation that he was already in. Now, um, without divine revelation, there is no way you and I or anyone can know if God has caused these disasters or situations that's going on in our personal lives, unless the, we don't know, unless the Lord, uh, unless you have you and I come to some kind of divine revelation, as far as we know, happen, uh, life happens to us all time and chance, <laughs> time and chance. Ecclesiastes, let us know time and chance happens to everyone. You keep living Things are going to happen, okay? the The natural ecosystem of the of, of of the of the world, the climate change, all of these things will simply happen over time. So, and, and time and chance experiences experiences uh, uh, tragedies due to no fault of your own, my own. Things just sometimes tend to happen, and the Lord. The Lord t many times just let things work itself out. There is no particular answer. There is no there is no uh, rhyme or reason. The Lord, um, if God, someone say, "My if God caused it, it has to happen. Why does He need? Why does He allow it?" Well, there are some reason why He sometimes allow things, so we won't get caught up into the glamour and attraction of this world. You know, this world offer a lot. Sin is fun. Sin is beautiful. Uh, you know, sin, uh, you know, is captivating. Uh, things happen and, and sometimes even for us to realize our frailty, how frail we are and how limitless we are and how needy we are. And that it takes a savior, take a God to deliver us from where we are. For us to see there is a bigger picture beyond this existence, that there is a, an eternal existence. So a lot of times can it bring our focus back into play for whatever reason. For every reason, for whatever reason that it happens, we have to understand that the Lord has everything under control. Nothing is going to happen without him not knowing what is happening. What we can do is these situations sometimes bring people to the end of themselves to realize that my life is more important then, uh, and, I, and my heart go out to those who have suffered so great a loss. My heart really go out to them. But I, sometimes we have to come to the end and, and, and they'll say that too. I hear them on the news. So many of them say, thank the Lord. That's just a house. I, I'm, you know, I, I do need help to help rebuild, but at least I'm alive. And some are holding their pets and they're thanking the Lord. And I'm thanking the Lord with them that their pets survived as well. So things happen. But we do serve a compassionate Savior. He's a generous Savior. And it comes to us also, well, what can we do? Okay, we can spread the gospel and draw people in. It encourages people to think about Jesus. It encourages people to draw near to him in repentance. Sometimes, like I said, Sometimes, well, let me say this. Sometimes we forget we need a savior. And when things happen across the world over and over and how, and we look at our frailty, we look, Lord, I need you. I need you. Every knee, every knee, every knee has to begin to call on Jesus in order to escape these times that we're living in. And, and some call for salvation. I want to, like I came in introducing you to Jesus, letting you know you don't have to be in that situation. 
You know, yes, disaster is happening around the world, but amen, you can prepare for your eternal soul. Okay, you, we don't know where death is. You might catch the COVID, I might catch, we don't know. We are living in uncertain, uh, uh, impulsive, we don't know what's going to happen from day to day, but Jesus is stable. Jesus can lead us out, can bring us out. And I want to in, encourage you, if you have not given your life to Christ, if you have not received the gospel, the good news that he died and forgave your sin and not going to hold it against you again, and he wants you to go down and Jesus saying to wash you of those sins that you was born in and that you did to offend him. He said, come now, come now, come, come while the table is spread. And the Lord will baptize, the Lord will take you down, will take you down the name of Jesus. And the Jesus will see how your heart is right. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost, just like that speaking in tongues, evidence that you got it. And now what I bring us to another question, what can I do to help? We have an opportunity right now as the church and people to help one another. During times like this, we need to come together as a community and be like the Good Samaritan and help each other. You can give to donations. You can just, you know, it's just not our church and our home and our four no more people needing help right now. Now, I just happen to have given to Salvation Army for the Haiti and 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 for the uh, for for the uh, I, uh, um, I, uh, Ida. Uh, in New Orleans to, to the relief. To, and you can call Salvation Army if you want to give. This is a time of opportunity that you can give. 1-800-725-2769. Or you can uh, go to FEMA, uh, just Google FEMA. Or you can give through the Salvation Army like I had done, done just today. Again, that number is 1-800-725-2769. Finally, we should pray. Above all, we should pray. But according to this lesson, since I have it in this order, we should always pray. It is our Christian duty to pray for all men. First Timothy 2, 1 and 2. We should pray for those directly affected by the need and disasters. And, and we should pray for their loved ones. And people are going through other situations. They, they are in bereavement. People needing healing. We should always pray. You don't know what's going to be at your doorstep tomorrow. Neither do I. But one thing I do know that we serve a savior. His name is Jesus. He's a God above all gods. He can, he can help you in your situation. And if you can help someone, help them. So let, and let us continue to pray for those that are putting their lives on the, uh, 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 on the front. Uh, the nurses and those that are taking out the trash and those that are cleaning up the streets. And, you know, you, you know they, they're, they're the front line. Let us pray for them. Despite the risk, they are still out there providing life-saving support. So, you see, we have a lot to pray for. But above all, what you want during this disaster and beyond or during times of peace, Oh, or, or at any time, you want your soul to be saved. Keep the main thing the main thing. Salvation is always the main thing because this life is temporary. Yes, you might lose this. You might even lose a loved one. But you have to understand one day you have to stand before the Lord. Right now, right now, he is your savior. He's loving. He's compassionate. He's understanding. He is forgiven, forgiving, regardless of what's happening in the world. One day he will be your judge. So you have an opportunity to, to dis escape what is to come. And those that die in the Lord, uh, it's a blessing to die in the Lord. Someone say, I just got the shot in time. I got that shot in time. You know, I got COVID and it wasn't that bad, but I'm so glad I got the shot. I, that's beautiful. But can you say, I'm so glad, hallelujah, that I went down in Jesus' name of spirit with the Holy Ghost just in time. And COVID could be taking you out of here. But just a year ago, you went down in Jesus' name was filled with the Holy Ghost. And you can say, I'm so glad I got salvation. I was washed in the blood. 
I was ever clothed in the name of Jesus, according to Galatians 3.27. I just got it in time. And you can go on and meet your Savior. Hallelujah. You've been listening to Continue for the Faith broadcast. This has been your host, Evangelist Sabrina White.